What happens when a child doesn't have the mental capacity to participate in court proceedings? For an adult, if an adult doesn't have the mental capacity to participate in court proceedings, we call that not competent. That means that the person isn't able to either understand the nature of what's going on, nature of the court proceedings, or they're not able to communicate with their attorney in a way that allows their attorney to effectively represent them. For an adult, that's called competency or lack of competency. But for a child, it's a very similar concept called fitness. Lack of fitness would mean that the child is not able to participate in the court proceedings. If a child were fit, then that would mean they are able to. If a child is not fit to proceed, it means that due to either an intellectual disability or a mental illness, a child doesn't have the mental capacity to understand the nature of the court proceedings or to be able to communicate effectively for the attorney to represent them in a productive way. When a child is not fit to proceed or when a child's not capable of participating in the juvenile justice system, what happens? Oftentimes, the child attorney will be the one to recognize that this child isn't asking questions that are age appropriate or this child isn't understanding the age appropriate information that I'm explaining when we're talking about what to expect or what's going to happen with court proceedings. When the attorney recognizes these things, it is incumbent upon that person to bring it to the court's attention and to say, I can't allow this child to go through the court proceeding if they're not understanding what's happening to them. And the law doesn't allow for that. So so when an attorney brings this to the court's attention, the court will pause the court proceedings and nothing further will happen until the child has an evaluation done by a professional who regularly makes opinions about children's fitness or unfitness to proceed. There are a number of subparts to the evaluation that the doctor will do, an IQ test, a number of other intelligence testing. They'll gather background. If there's any previous diagnoses made about the child's mental illness, those will be taken into consideration. And then after reviewing all of that information, the doctor will make an opinion. This child either is fit to proceed and court can continue, or this child is not fit to proceed and court may not continue until the child is fit. If a child is not fit to proceed, then the child will go to fitness restoration services. So sometimes fitness restoration can be done in the community while the child stays at home. Sometimes fitness restoration has to be done while the child is in custody and they'll go to a location where fitness restoration is done. Usually the court will order a child to participate in fitness restoration services for 90 days. Around the 75th day, the court will hear back from the facility about their opinion on how the child is doing. Is this child becoming fit or do we need more time? Whenever the child is deemed fit to proceed, the child will come back and court will proceed as normal. If a child is never found fit to proceed, then court stays paused until the child is or until either the statute of limitations runs out or the maximum punishment that the child could have served runs out or sometimes a child will reach an age where the only next option is to send them to adult facility where they will stay in custody or residential, but they'll be transferred to an adult facility. These are very rare cases and extreme cases, but they do happen and there is a provision in the law for it. Most of the time what happens is the child will go to that first 90 day fitness restoration program. And during that time, they'll be educated on the court process. If they need medication, they'll be medicated. If they need psychological treatment, they'll receive that. And usually after that original 90 day program, they'll come back fit and they'll be able to participate in court services again. That's the scenario we see most often. If there's a way that we can help you with the juvenile law related matter, give us a call at 817-203-2220.